And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Elodie. Today we're looking at Pirate Toons, which is a game about building a pirate ship and... Do I know? I was about to say searching for treasure. I guess there's treasure in the game, but this game's about building a pirate ship. Mm -hmm. And it's about auctions, because you know that pirates, when they want stuff, they like to auction for it. <laughs> uh, three! Oh no, R4! Right? No. Oh, well, whatever. This game is interesting. Let me show you. In this game, each player is going to be building a pirate ship. And you're going to start with two pieces of a pirate ship. And each ship looks and is slightly different. Your ship is going to have uh, parts that are different levels. And so this is a one level, this is three levels, and there's different compartments. Here's a mast, and there's a window, and there's a spot for a gun. And so you're going to have these different parts that you're going to be trying to fill. And the game takes place over eight rounds. And in each round you do the same thing. First you'll take three of these boards, and you'll place them into these spots. And then you will take six of these tiles, and you'll place them like this. Now once you've done that, everyone is going to get together the meeples of their color, the pirate meeples of their color, so you have six of those. A 15 second timer is prepared, and then you'll take another board, put it on top of this board like this. You will then flip the entire board over, and then as quickly as you can, ready, set, go, you take this board off, and you can see all the tiles at the same time players are going to start bidding on those tiles. If you want a tile, you simply put a guy on it. But someone else might put something on it too. So you want to have the most, or in case of a tie, in this case here, green's winning because the red and blues cancel each other out. So I might put one there higher than that. And so you're putting them on all different things and placing them. As soon as the timer runs out, any player can shout stop, and then it's over. If you are winning something, you will take those tiles each player will take those tiles. The leftover tiles are going to be auctioned off, but before that, each player will get a coin for each meeple that they did not place on the board. Players will then do a blind bid auction with their coins, revealing it, and whoever has bid the most money can take one of the tiles of their choice, must take one of the tiles of their choice. The second highest takes one after that, third highest, etc. If you don't bid anything, you don't get any tiles. Um, after everyone has been on tiles, if any of these ship tiles are left, they go away. Any of these tiles fall into the ocean where they'll be up and eligible for the next bidding. Now, once you take this stuff, you are going to add it to your ship. Now, when you put new ship sections in your ship, and let's focus a little bit here on the ship itself, you can put them on any way you want, but they're not going to necessarily attach as well as you want them to be. Now, each ship shows how big the ship is at the bottom. So you can see down here, there are four barrels to show that this is a size four ship. You also notice that there's an anchor here on this side, and this anchor completely connects to each other, while on this side it does not. There's only half an anchor. But up here at the top, there's a basically a life preserver which needs to be attached to the other side. So this is a four, and on this side it connects to a one size, which I'm, I have here. This is a one size connection. And over here, it's supposed to connect on a four size, which I don't have. Another way to tell this is you can see this seashell here is all white. This one here is half white and half blue. So if I add it, this segment in here too, you can see this one doesn't fit well either place. But if I had put this one here, and you can rearrange these as you get them, this one connects. It's a one over here. So I would need one that connects to a level two. And again, you can kind of tell these things by essentially looking at both either the seashell or the shape. So example, this one fits here because it has a red seashell and it forms a complete shield. Now, you don't have to do this. You can put a ship together any way you want to, but it, it's going to count for points at the end of the game. As you win these tiles, you simply put them in the proper spot. So here I put um, that, you know, looking in on the treasure. Here is a round port tile, so that goes down here. Um, mast flag tiles will go up here on masts. 
although there are other people that you can stick up there and if you have a mask sometimes there's room for extra things um, that you can put on top of that so you're going to be placing different spots out here on the board then you'll start another auction round and do it over and over and over again now after the eighth round you're going to score your ship and this is where the points are going to come in. Um, there's a bunch of point tokens that players will have. They're both negatives and positives. They're twos and fives, and um, the negatives are negative ones. It's kind of an odd, an odd mix of chips, actually. They should just made everything ones and fives. But anyhow, whoever has the biggest ship is going to get five. Second biggest gets two. That you count the number of barrels. Whoever has the fastest ship, the number of sails will get points. Uh, whoever has the most leftover gold at the end of the game is going to get points. You're going to lose points for each empty spot where you didn't put something. So these three here have not been filled and neither has this mast up here. So that would be four spots that this person would lose. Um, you're also going to get points for tiles. These tiles here themselves, if you get matching tiles, you'll get a point. You can Each tile can be part of a set, so three of a kind is worth a lot. Three different is worth some, and two of a kind is worth something else, too. And the, the game comes with this that shows you all the tiles that are possible in the game and which spot those tiles go on. And at the end of the game, they show you basically how you score points. Most sales, most money, biggest ship. Are your connections correct? Each connection that's correct gives you points. Connections that are incorrect lose you points. Uh, is your stuff, if it's not filled in, you lose points. Um, and whoever has the most missing stuff loses more points, and then you get bonus points for tiles. At the end of the game, the most points is the winner. Okay, we'll get past the odd theming of Pirate Zone Auction, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> this is an auction game, but there's two auctions, right? There's the blind bidding auction. Mm -hmm. Um, which isn't so bad. Some people hate those because they, when you lose your money, but you only lose your money here to get something. Although I hate when I bid three and Melody bids four or something and she takes a tile that I want it and I bid three. So now I got to take some tile. I don't really want that much. That I don't like. But the other bidding is super fast. What do you think about that? In my opinion, I would I'd rather have it like take turns and being able to put out as many as you want on one tile. Okay, so you just go back and forth till somebody wins? Yeah. Maybe. I think that the speed element is there because the ties work. Then if two because, people like, tie, then me, the other person wins. I wanted to see what the tiles are. Like, a little... Like, I actually have time to see the tiles before, like, everyone votes on the one I... Do. Yeah, but I don't know that the game would work. If you thought too hard about it, the game shouldn't be that heavy, and this is what I'm thinking. Now, I will say that the... The treasure chest thing where you put the tiles in and then you flip it and pull them off and then you put them in again and flip it. That was really cool. That was. I don't know why why I like that so much, but it was a neat thing. That way you see everything the same at once. And it that's what, if if you took your time, then what was the yeah. whole point of even doing that? Okay. <laughs> well, I, mean, I can understand what Melody's saying. And some people aren't going to like this because of the speed aspect. Now, building your ship is probably the most fun part of the game. That was the fun part. Because when you're done, whether you've won or lost, you sit there and you're like, that's my pirate ship. <laughs> yeah, that's my pirate ship. And, and, I, and I like that part of it. It um, looks more like a Viking ship, in my opinion. <laughs> or uh, a skyscraper on, on the sea. Mm -hmm. They're really weird looking ships. And the point scoring is going to be a little wonky at first. You're like, okay, I got three of the same here and three different here. And you have all these chips going around. But we did learn... I thought, okay, I'll make a smaller ship, but I'll fill every spot in that ship. I won't lose any points due to empty space efficiency. That's what I was going to do, but everyone kept taking the things they wanted, so I am, ended up having a bigger ship. And well, the point is, efficiency is not the best way to play this game. Because mm -hmm. yes, you lose points for empty spaces, but getting points for matching groups is so much more important. <laughs> and then bigger ships and stuff. Huh? At the ending, they had... Oh, yeah, there's no rule for tie-breaking. Boo! Because pirates don't share. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Pirates do not share. So, this game isn't groundbreaking, but that whole flipping the treasure chest, I've never seen anything like that in the game before. So that was really neat. The speed auction is in a few other games, and blind bidding is in a lot of games. The components are fine. The artwork is good. Some ugly pirates. Um, yeah. Some questionable pirates. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so I found it humorous and interesting. The game says stay here 30 minutes, and that's really the, the, the speed of it. I think it works better with more players because you're fighting over the tiles more. But if you play with only two players, you can build really big, cool ships or whatever. Yeah. Um, I like it. I don't well, think it's amazing. because you have like only six people. So. Well, that's true, but you could win more things. You're not fighting against as many people, maybe. Like if there's three people, you're splitting the tiles by three. Four people splitting them by Normally four. Normally, I just fought against one person while the other person. Just We're not going to mention that person, in Eric's name. Um, but anyhow, <laughs> um, I liked it. I don't think it's fantastic, but it's a decent filler, and it offered a different feel than many games. What do you think? I thought it was a lot of fun. It really had like a kid feeling in it, even though some of the things are kind of I don't know, like not for kids, the point thing, but. I just liked it. <laughs> oh, I should mention one minor thing is that the tiles, the little um, flowers that, that, that line up or the stars oh, that line the up and the seashells. things, they don't line up very well. The, the tiles could have been cut better. Um, it's not a huge deal, but I if you're very OCD. Until the end. <laughs> yeah, well, either way, but still, certainly one that you might want to check out, Pyder Tunes. Mm -hmm. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool hey, Stuff. Shut the door. Stuff. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.